Welcome to PVTV International. I'm going to present this week's editions of a news roundup. Cabinet news NUG stands in solidarity with Japan, extend condolences amid awkward tragedy. On January 2nd, the National Unity Government NUG convey its deep sorrow upon learning about the awkward that struck the central region of Japan on January 1st. The NUG also expressed concerns regarding the potential threat of a subsequent tsunami. In a message, the NUG extended heartfelt condolences for any loss of life and expressed ongoing concern for all those who might be affected. The statement emphasized the NUG's commitment to standing in solidarity with the government of Japan during this critical time, assuring them that the people of Myanmar are united in their support. The NUG conveyed that their thoughts are with the entire nation of Japan. NUG affirms high possibilities in current landscape to root out detectorship. In its message commemorating the 76th Independence Day, the National Unity Government NUG emphasized that the current moment holds great opportunities to eradicate the military dictatorship and pave the way for a federal democratic union. The NUG asserted that this ambitious goal can be realized through a harmonious blend of unity among all ethnic groups. The steadfast opposition spanning generations against the military dictatorship and the collective strengths of the democratic movements. Central Committee for Interim Implementations of Local Administration Prime Minister Ma Win Kaidan declares 2024 as the final year for the Taras Military Council. During a meeting of the Central Committee for Interim Implementations of Local Administration on January 4, Prime Minister Ma Win Kaidan expressed confidence that the current year marks the end of the Taras Military Council's reign. I firmly believe that this year will be the last for the Terrorist Military Council, which has consistently prioritized its own interests even to this day, stated the Prime Minister. He further emphasized the unity declared by those who vow to fight together with one voice is not a mere fantasy. Tangible results are already emerging. Why acknowledging the necessity of permanently removing the weakening Myanmar military's involvement from politics and seeking justice during the transitional period, the Prime Minister underscored the importance of learning from historical divisions among ethnic groups. He stressed that all revolutionary forces, including this government, must work hard as the Garand junctures call for the establishment of a union founded on trust, mutual respect and solidarity that puts the people welfare first. Ministry of Foreign Affairs, NUG Foreign Ministry issues public statement on relations with China. On January 1st, the National Unity Government's NUG Ministry of Foreign Affairs released a public announcement outlining its stance on relations with China. The statement affirmed the commitment to maintaining bilateral cooperation on social and economic matters between Myanmar and China, with a shared aspirations for the economic well-being of citizens from both nations. Additionally, the the NUG pledged to ensure the safety of Chinese investment and other businesses operating in Myanmar. Furthermore, the announcement declared that the NUG would not permit any other organization threatening the national security of neighboring countries to enter Myanmar territory. It emphasized the continued acknowledgement and adherence to all agreements signed between the two countries before the military coup in 2021, including border demarcation agreements. The statement also outlined Myanmar collaborations with regional countries, including China, in combating transnational crime such as online scam, online gambling, human trafficking, and illegal drug trade. These collaborated efforts aim to safeguard not only the border stability and safety between Myanmar and China, but also the overall security within the region. Ministry of Defense NUG's Defense Minister Wu Yumun visits People's Revolution Comrades receiving health care. As per the Ministry of Defense announcement on 30 December 2023, the Union Minister of Defense Wu Yimun visited comrades of the People's Revolution who are currently receiving treatment for injuries sustained during the People's Defensive War. 
During the visit, the Union Minister extended wishes for the swift and successful recovery to all individuals, undergoing treatment and ensure that necessary preparations were made to provide adequate nutrition and food support. NUG Defence Minister urges military Council's forces to join people's embrace. In a public announcement dated January 4, the National Duty Government's NUG Defence Minister Uyimun declared that the current moment is an optimum time for military council soldiers and police officers to get the right standpoint and align themselves with the people. He called on them to abandon their loyalty to and defence of the military dictatorship, urging them instead to pledge allegiance to the surveilling government and the forces of the People's Revolution. Uyimun said, I noticed that the prisoners of war, including Lieutenant Colonel Det Aung, who were captured by the People's Defense Army Mandalay, were relieved when they reached us, saying that their lives were out of danger. He urged all levels of the military council, entire battalion, column, operations command, or regional command to contact the NUG and revolutionary forces as soon as possible. Ministry of Home Affairs and Immigration, NUG Ministry of Home Affairs report resistance against illegitimate military council. On January 4, the National Duty Government's NUG Minister of Home Affairs and Immigration issued an announcement stating that, in accordance with the right of the public to defend themselves, over 20 members of the illegitimate military councils were killed and more than 10 were injured within a day of the People's Defensive War. The violent suppression, arrest, and killing by the terrorist military council prompt up the public response to protect themselves. The announcement also highlighted the ongoing peaceful public strike across the country, demanding the permanent cessation of the military dictatorship in Myanmar and for the establishment of a federal democratic union. Ministry of Planning, Finance and Investment, NUG revised Spring Law 3 with new features. On December 31, the NUG Ministry of Planning, Finance and Investment issued a statement that the Spring Law 3 will be relaunched with new formats and features for the Spring Law 3 lovers. In order to provide a better and safer service from January 1st, the Spring Lottery Messenger Chabot say process and foreign book purchase system sold by the international agents will be shut down. The announcement appeals for continued support from the public until the revolution is successful. Furthermore, the ministry expressed its commitment to maintaining a special record, honoring its individual who has steadfastly supported the Spring Lottery with unwavering revolutionary spirit, overcoming all challenges since its inception on August 15, 2021. Ministry of Education Ministry of Education sets deadline for university. Admission selection process on January 3rd, the Ministry of Education announced that students applying for university admissions have until January 15 to choose their preferred subjects. Ministry of Human Rights, National Unity Government reports 170 verified human rights violations to IIMM. In the comprehensive annual report on human rights violations from January to December 2023, the Ministry of Human Rights of the National Unity Government disclosed that out of nearly 4,700 instances documented against the Terrorist Military Council, a total of 170 incidents with accurate information were officially reported to the International Independent Mechanisms for Myanmar IIMM, and the international community. Throughout 2023, the Ministry systematically gathered data on human rights violations across Myanmar, employing media monitoring to conduct a thorough analysis. Utilizing online monitoring, 4,656 cases were catalogued with 657 instances subjected to true examination and verification on the ground. Among these, 322 incidents were meticulously documented, supported by information gathered through interviews, photographs, and other means firmly confirming their authenticity. 
Overview of military operations. In the first week of January 2024, in the initial week of January 2024, a noteworthy turn of events occurred as the entire Laokai Regional Operations Command of thousands of soldiers chose to disarm and the Kangkong militia reunited with its parent organization, the Kachi Independence Army KIA, in northern Shan State. This collective decision strongly suggests the beginning of the military causes collapse in the region. Simultaneously, People's Defense Forces PDF and Alliance forces achieved notable victory, successfully seizing control of outposts in the expressway area located 18 miles away from the Defense Service Academy in Dieulun. This strive and underscore the military causal domination's ability to maintain control over strategic territories. In addition, the KIA successfully launched an attack at a military helicopter near the Liza area. In a significant turn of events, the entire Laokai Regional Command Headquarters, along with various troops and thousands of family members, have chosen to surrender to Kokan MNDAA forces in the northern Shan State. This mass surrender includes six Brigadier General, including the H2 Deputy Commanders, over 2,400 troops and 1,600 family members. The surrender forces handed over more than 4,000 small arms, tanks and body armor, artillery and multiple rocket launchers, MRN. Additionally, the formidable Kangka militia in northern Shan has rejoined its parent organization, the Kachi Independence Army KIA. The extensive defections of both army units and militias, coupled with the rapid color subsidy, paints a conclusive pictures of the military council collapse throughout the entire northern Shan region. The PDF and their allies are actively engaged in camp battles near Bien a crucial military core area known for housing numerous military universities. In Nautu Township, just over 18 miles away from the military university, the PDF and our National Liberation Army TNLA successfully captured a military outpost in Nautu Township in Dambu village, along with its commander, Lieutenant Colonel De Aung. Moreover, strategic advances were made as the PDF, along with the Karen National Union KNU, seized control of eight military outposts near Kanyukong on the Yangon Mandalay Expressway. Similarly, military camps surrounding the the city of Nantangun in the Sitdown River Basin are under attack. The onset of 2024 witnessed intensified penetrating attacks in both the expressway area and Sitdown River Basin. In a remarkable incident, a military transport helicopter was shot down in Wymore Township near the headquarters of the Gache Independence Army in the Liza region. Major Song Myo Tan, the helicopter pilot, was captured while the six people on board, including co-pilot, lost their lives. Let's see what we have for our weekly roundup news in coming weeks. Thanks for watching PVTV International.